Hi, welcome to today's alginate gel making session. Alginate is a polysaccharide that can be crosslinked by calcium ions to make a hydrogel. And that's precisely what we will be doing today. Based on the molecular weight of alginate, uh, we can tune the stress relaxation properties of the hydrogel. Uh, so today we'll be showing how to make uh, alginate hydrogels from both low molecular weight alginate and high molecular weight alginate. So the hydrogels made from high molecular weight alginate are slow relaxing. In other words, when a force is applied on these hydrogels, the stress takes longer time to relax, whereas low molecular weight alginate gives us fast relaxing gels, which have quick dissipation of st applied stresses. So the things we need to make alginate hydrogels are alginate. Uh, we need calcium to make a hydrogel and we, we are going to use calcium sulfate, calcium sulfate slurry. So from this calcium sulfate slurry, we first prepare a working stock solution, uh, as you can see here. And we prepare the stock solution by uh, mixing 40% of the slurry with 60% serum-free media such as DMM F12. And uh, this can be also found in the recipe attached. So we use calcium sulfate instead of any other source of calcium, primarily because calcium sulfate is not heavily soluble in water. In other words, it takes longer time to diffuse through the gel and crosslink it, which is exactly what we want. If we use something like calcium fluoride, which is rapidly uh, diffusible and binds the alginate, we fail to get uniform hydrogels. But calcium sulfate is a good uh, material to give us alginate hydrogels which are very uniform in properties. So here is the recipe for making alginate hydrogels which we will be following today. And as you can see uh, we need a couple of syringes uh, to make our hydrogels. And we will be adding alginate, DMEM and calcium sulfate as shown below. So we start off with 600 microliters of alginate in syringe 1. Let's draw the alginate in using a pipette and make sure to avoid uh, getting any air bubbles into the pipette tip. Now let's transfer the alginate to the syringe and the way we do this is that we use a syringe uh, to draw in alginate and not a pipette. Usually there's an air bubble or two uh, when we transfer the alginate to the syringe and we want to get rid of this air bubble. And the way we do this is that we first pull the syringe down, hold the tip and then tap against the syringe using a, a marker. And once we got it, get rid of the air bubble, always make sure to pull the syringe down because there may be some uh, smaller droplets of alginate which are above and we if we directly push the syringe up, we might, might lose alginate. So we have alginate ready in syringe 1. And we'll have to add appropriate amount of DMEM to syringe 1. And if we're encapsulating cells, it's usually in this volume uh, of DMEM that we have cells in. But today we, we will not be encapsulating any cells. So it's just plain DMEM. Again, it's important to use the syringe to draw the fluid in and not the pipette. We shall mix alginate and DMEM in the syringe itself. And the way we do this is we draw the syringe up and down multiple times to ensure that the alginate and DMEM have mixed uniformly. So anywhere between 30 to 50 mixes is good enough to make sure the alginate is all uniform and a small tip uh, while mixing alginate is that you would want to have your thumb against the base of the syringe so that when you're mixing it back and forth you don't let uh, the syringe go all the way through and squirt alginate out so when we mix the alginate and DMEM in the syringe nicely to make sure it's all uniform And now our syringe one is all set.
we can put the load lock on and push the alginate all the way to the top of the load lock. Now we can move ahead to syringe 2. So now let's move ahead to syringe 2. In syringe 2, we have a calcium stock solution along with appropriate amount of DMM so that our final alginate concentration is 2% when we are starting out with 3% alginate. So first, let's draw in the required amount of DMM F12 in syringe 2. followed by calcium stock. So the calcium sulfate and the calcium stock precipitates very quickly. So usually the calcium sulfate is all the way at the bottom of the falcon tube. And we do not want this. We want a uniform mix of calcium stock. So we do this by shaking the falcon tube rapidly uh, to make sure we get a uniform calcium stock. And we have to be quick when we draw in the required amount of calcium uh, stock from the falcon tube. We mix nicely and then quickly draw in the required amount of calcium stock. Okay, now we can transfer this calcium stock to syringe 2 where we already have some DMEM. So here we do not have any air bubbles, but in case you do, it's important to get rid of those air bubbles. Important thing to note is that the calcium sulfate that we just added to syringe 2 has already precipitated down. So it's important to mix it really quick and then attach syringe 2 to the lower lock quickly and then mix 6 times and deposit the mixed alginate onto the plate. All these steps have to be done really quick so that we get uniform gels. So we mixed the calcium sulfate in syringe 2 so that the anti-fluid is uniform. We get it up, attach the lower lock and then mix 6 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then quickly dump the alginar onto the plate and close plate. So that's it. We're done. Okay, so let's move ahead to round two where we'll be making high molecular weight alginate which is uh, more viscous. So unlike low molecular weight alginate where we just used uh, a pipette to get our alginate in and then put it in the syringe, high molecular weight alginate is much more viscous so it can't be uh, just drawn out uh, with a pipette. So what we're going to do is use a syringe, plunge it in and directly pull the alginate out. Uh, Alternatively, uh, you could also use a positive displacement pipette uh, to get the alginate out and probably remove the syringe all the way. And you could have gotten it in and then put it in the syringe uh, and put the stopper back. So that's uh, alternatively another way of uh, getting high molecular weight alginate out. But if you don't have access to a positive displacement pipette, uh, you can directly pull it in. Uh, so it's important to note that the syringe markings start from the very top. So if you want 600 microliters, for example, uh, the, the marking of 600 means that the alginate in this portion is 600. But we have this extra space here, which we need to account for. Uh, so it's always good uh, to use a pipette uh, with 600 microliters, let's say, uh, of of DMEM to calibrate uh, where the marking is 
I already know where that is, so uh, I won't be doing it today. So let's just extract alginate first. So right now I have a lot of alginate and you would want to get rid of the air bubble at the bottom. So how I would do that is just pull it all the way in and then get rid of the air bubble. So just one more time. There you go. So 600 microliters is somewhere between 500 and 600 here in the middle mark. So I'm going to get rid of the extra alginate we have. There we go. So I think that is around 600 microliters. So I'm gonna keep it right here. And we'll be adding uh, the required amount of DMEM. So as I said earlier, uh, whatever cells in case we are encapsulating cells, will be in this uh, DMEM and it's always important to use uh, the syringe pull instead of pushing the pipette. And we need to mix this in syringe itself, you see that the DMEM is floating down whereas the alginate is at the top. You would want to mix it well to make sure it's all uniform. This takes a little time and it's important to mix well to get uniform gels again. Again, it's important to make sure we don't have a lot of air bubbles in the alginate. Uh, next, we'll be moving to syringe 2. So here I have uh, enough DMEM and calcium sulfate to get the target stiffness as well as to get the alginate uh, to be at 2%. So again, it's important to mix the calcium very well uh, before we get the amount we need. So as I said before, it's important to mix the calcium sulfate uh, stock to get it more uniform like this.
more often than not, you tend to have an air bubble here, which you would typically want to get rid of. And again, you can see that the calcium is settling down pretty quickly and you would want to mix it to make, make sure it's uniform. So we wait for 20 minutes and right now it has been around 20 minutes and the gel is pretty much uh, gelled throughout. We carefully lift off the top plate and as you can see the gel has formed. We'll now cut the entire gel into smaller discs which we can use for various assays. We, right now we're using a 6mm punch, 6mm punch to cut out 6mm diameter discs. This can be a little hard at first but with practice you always get better. Now that we have cut our discs we would want to separate the discs from the whole gel. We are doing this using a spatula. Again, this might be a little tricky at first, but with enough practice, it'll be pretty straightforward. So today I made around 900 microliters of total volume uh, alginate gel. And I, I would typically get around seven to eight discs, which are two mm thickness. So we have our 6 millimeter discs right here. Once we have our discs ready, we can transfer all of them to growth media and begin our experiments. And that's it.